Welcome back to Wicked Little Podcast. I am your host, Owen, and we had to make an emergency mock draft after this week's roundup of news. And I'm happy. I was actually planning on making this back on Tuesday, and then the rust trade happened. I was like, okay, let me just wait and see. And I'm glad I did because now Carson Wentz is off and off to Washington now. So we have some uh, some different moves we can make. So I just want to jump right into it. I made this on the uh, Dynasty Index. There's a mock draft tab there. So if you want, go check check out Kill Pro's Twitter. Hit him up on there or his, at his email or on the ad behind me while I'm talking right now. And you can figure out how to sign up for that three dollars a month. 20 bucks for a year, I believe. All right, let's just get right into it. Uh, no real change at the beginning. I want to get into these more creative picks due to the trade situation. So, number one, Evan Neal. Uh, even though Jacksonville just tagged Cam Robinson, Evan Neal has experience playing guard, right guard, left tackle, right tackle. You can plug up play him anywhere on the offensive line, even if you want Cam Robinson to still be your left tackle for at least this one season. And then, if you can't agree with Cam Robinson going forward, you can just switch Neil over to the left tackle position afterwards. You also have Walker Little and stuff, so maybe you just put Walker Little left tackle and then keep Neil, you know, as your versatile piece wherever you need him to be. It's just an overall solid, sound pick, and it seems like that's the one that's going to be taken now, um, if not one of these edge rushers. And speaking of edge rushers, real quick, Detroit Lions, Aiden Hodgson, Michigan boy to the Detroit team, feeling a need for them. They do need... Some just blue chip guys on the defensive side of the ball, they're going to want to run the ball and play good defense, and Aiden Hutchinson is like a J.J. Watt level impact. So bring him in, let him lead that defense. I know you already have some other pass rushers, but those they could be cap casualties. And also none of them really have the the, the current skill and ability that Aiden Hutchinson will bring you on day one. Houston Texans just need to add talent. Kayvon Thibodeau, edge out of Oregon. Um, you pair him up with like Ross Blacklock, who had a decently break, a decent breakout season last year, and I think you'll have a pretty good pass rush. And that way, you can start building around uh, a good defense to help support whatever quarterback you have playing. If it's Davis Mills, if it's somebody else going in the future, having a good defense to fall back on if they make mistakes is going to uh, help them a lot. The New York Jets at four. Uh, I know they don't like. There's a narrative going around they don't like drafting corners, and there's a narrative about this guy falling because of injuries and not playing particularly well. He's still pl- Derek Stingley Jr. is the pick here from LSU. He is still really good. He had like he played like three games this past season, and he had one bad play, and it just tanked like his PFF grade and other things that they're looking at. So I think when a healthy Derek Stingley comes back and plays for the Jets, he can be a work- defense rookie of the year candidate. Um, he's getting disrespected too much. Sauce Gardner is not a better cornerback prospect than him. I love Sauce. Um, you know, if he was there for my bills, I'd hope I pray to the Lord and Savior that they take him. But, you know, I just gotta take Derek I gotta take Derek. He's just the perfect spot here. They need cornerback help in the Jets and they just need defensive help overall and he's just so athletic and so good technically. So uh taking him there at number four. At number five, New York Giants take Trevor Penning, fill him right into the left tackle spot, let him just pave roads for uh, Saquon Barkley. Him next to Will Hernandez with um, Andrew Thomas at like a right guard or something like that. Just having this like big, beefy, you know, road grading offensive line from the Saquon is something that's really going to be uh, needed if they're going to want to let Daniel Jones succeed. Um, and then make the decision to go on forward. Uh, Brian Dable isn't the best with the scheme up run game, so allowing to get push up front so that way the running backs have uh, areas to move and they have things to work with is going to help him, especially with his new head coaching thing. And like I said, evaluating Daniel Jones. If you can get a good run game going, Daniel Jones may look better by comparison, which may be a bad thing if you're some people. Number six, we have the Carolina Panthers taking Charles Cross off the tackle out of Mississippi State. We're on offensive tackles here in the top uh, seven. With uh, Charles Cross, the Panthers are going to want to lean more towards a pass-heavy game. They don't really have a single quarterback they want, but they got Tam- Sam Bradford for another year. Uh, Chris McCaffrey might be coming back, and even when he's in there, they want to play more like zone running schemes. And Cross might not be your power blocker at left tackle, but he could definitely run some zone running schemes, get up to the second level, and use his length and size on the linebacker. So I believe that he will fit well with that, with what they're trying to do there. And just getting like a franchise left tackle, which they haven't had since like 2014, uh, is something that they really need to prioritize. And you can move Brady Christensen somewhere else on the line, right tackle or anything like that. And then, you know, just put your best five out there. Jets are back up again, number seven for uh, they take Kyle Hamilton, safety on Notre Dame. We gave them an offensive tackle to help him out there, and even though the safety isn't the biggest need, Kyle Hamilton is the modern defender. Like he 
people who run spread, he can cover any receiver in the spread, even though he didn't run that particularly well at the Combine. He can cover receivers, he can cover tight ends, he can cover backs. You ask him to do it, and he'll cover them. And then also those teams that are dialing it back and going back to you know heavy packages to combat these nickel-heavy defenses, he can come up and play like a linebacker. You know, over, he's, he's literally like, plays like a linebacker, but he's fast and complete safety and has good enough coverage skills. So he's going to come up and be a help for you in uh, the run defense. So he's like just the modern defender for to come combat what modern NFL offenses are doing. He's the Kyle Pitts of safety prospects, basically. Is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, number eight, Atlanta Falcons take Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Uh, I originally had this as Andrew Booth, but after I'm gonna have to go back and double check. You know, I'm, I'm doing my rounds back around to just update their grades and stuff like that, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have Gardner come out higher than Booth after I come back around. So I'm I'm pretty good pretty good with that spot. I know there's been a lot of buzz about him in the one corner. He uh, had a pretty good combine, so I'm I'm okay with him going number eight here to Atlanta. They if they could pair Ahmad Garner up with uh, oh AJ Terrell, who had a pretty good season last season, uh, and you can be able because you still had a lot down Mike Evans and Chris Godwin when you're facing the box, and the Panthers still have DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, and they have all these other wide receivers that are starting to build up and get some you know make some name recognition. Terrace Marshall, you're gonna need more coverage guys, and more corners is never bad. So yeah, Ahmad Garner, maybe not my cornerback one, but he's still going to be top 10 pick here. All right, this is the one I was ramping up to. This is the first pick that's really ma- like you know, magnificent, ma- yeah, changed like insanely by the trades. It is the Seattle Seahawks in nine. Uh, in place of them, Broncos, they're going to take Ike McQuanu, and I don't play him at guard out of NC State. Uh, I have my concerns with how he plays at tackle. Um, I know a lot of people don't. I don't like how much he leans forward when he's at tackle, and it could lead to some defenders who are better with their hands to use his own weight against them. But he also flashed some really good ability there. I think as long as you have Dwayne Brown there, you can put Ike McQuanu at guard. And the re- you moved off Russell Wilson, I'm pretty fairly certain, knowing who P. Carroll is, he's going to want to build towards a run-heavy offense, and there's nothing more run-heavy than drafting at Kamaquanu here, putting running Rashad Penny or Chris Carson right behind him, and just having this ground-to-pound kind of offense, they'll live with whatever quarterback they have, because they're going to be throwing it like 20 times max a game. Just running the running the ball with the two-back set, and just uh, yeah, really grind it in there. I Kamaquanu falls a little bit in other people's eyes. I'm not the biggest fan of him, so I, uh, yeah, I'm having him go to Seattle here. They're going to set a new tone and have a new idea with how their offense is going to go. The New York Jets draft David Ajabo, edge out of Michigan. Uh, the Jets are going to run a, the Robert Sala wide nine defensive scheme. They added a cornerback already, and that's their defense was atrocious last year. Give Zach Wilson a little more time to grow into it. This is a deeper class. Once you, not really high-end first-round talents in the interior offensive line and off tackles, but more in like the second, third rounds, you can find some good quality starters there. So Plus, you got cap space to invest there for some veterans to help out Zach Wilson. So we're going to let the Jets' defense become younger and be able to have more skill. And if you have David Ojabo lined up, lined up as a wide nine kind of defense end and just let him use all that bend and athleticism burst to get after the quarterback, I really like that fit. Uh, I know David Ojabo is getting a little overvalued right now as like potentially like top number two address you're taking over to Kevin Thibodeau. I don't agree with that. So I think Ojabo would be fit perfect fit for New York Jets here, and he's not falling too far down, and he's only at 10. Number 11 is our next biggest change over this past week, which is the Washington football team no longer going to be in the QB hunt now, at least for this year with Carson Wentz. So I have him taking Tyler Linderbaum, center out of Iowa, top five player on my board, personally. And looking at their offensive line, it's decent. They got Sam Cosme. They can bring Brad Grant to sure. If they can't, they will try to. But all you need to do is just bring in Tyler Linderbaum and have him be the, the pivot for that area. He's really smart, great with his leverage, even though he's a little lighter. Amazing mover. And if you're going to get... Antonio Gibson and Terry McLaurin and like maybe like triple option RPO stuff. Tyler Lindenbaum's your man. I think he can go in there and just piece together the offensive line and hopefully keep Carson Wentz clean, or if not, establish a good run game to fall back to when he starts you know throwing underhand passes to the defense. Number twelve, Minnesota Vikings gonna keep mocking it because it makes sense. Andrew Booth, cornerback out of Clemson. Vikings need cornerback help. They need cornerback help. They need cornerback help. Andrew Booth is the best corner. Well, he's not the best corner left on my board, but he uh, he's the more scheme versatile, and I think that the Vikings scheme specifically is going to look forward to having him in it. So, yeah, Andrew Booth to the Vikings. It's going to be a boring pick, and it's probably going to be the most realistic pick for them. I like it a lot. Uh, 
although so just get used to it Vikings fans I might be able to change it up next mock but like this is like my favorite player team need fit kind of thing because Booth is just really good overall all around and the Vikings need to get an identity on defense figure out what, how they're going to run it with what players and if you need to you know you're not trying to fit players who don't fit your scheme and just slam it in there Andrew Booth is so versatile he's good at everything that even if you don't have like a solid set scheme because of who you have in your, on your team already Andrew Booth can come in and still excel Number 13, including Browns, Garrett Wilson. They got OBJ. Jarvis Landry is meh. Uh, you get this guy, get uh, Wilson, who can be that like dominant catch point kind of guy who runs decent routes, has good rack ability, good athleticism. Yeah, overall, just you know, you need to add to that wide receiver quirk. Maybe maximize Baker Mayfield with that play action pass game. Baltimore Ravens at 14, take Kenyon Green, guard out of. Uh, Texas A&M, just solid overall performer, still a top 10 guy on my board. People, you know, looking down on him because he's just good, boring yet good. Um, so I think that he'll fit in. It's one of those guys that Baltimore is going to pick up at 14, and he's going to be an all-pro. People are like, how the hell did he fall to 14? So I think Baltimore just drafts good players, and that's who, that's what Kenny Green is. Best player on the board, fits a play position to need for them. They haven't really been able to replace with Marshall Yonda gone. And Alejandro Villanueva retired, so even if you need Green to kick out the tackle, he could do that for you. At number 15, we start the run of Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm finally on the Jermaine Johnson train. I was off of it this entire process, and I watched some more of his tape, got to NC State, and man, Jermaine Johnson's a first-round pick. I, I gotta give in. I had him as a third-round pick for the longest time, but I've got to give in to Jermaine Johnson as a first-round pick here. Philadelphia Eagles need some more edge help in that rotation. Derek Barnett might be gone soon, so adding Jermaine Johnson, who's this athletic freak who, despite having a, you know a few moves, can still has that room to grow and has a higher ceiling than I first thought he would have. So bring him in, let him be a situational pass rusher, and even though he is really good on run defending downs, maybe have him play early downs and then you know a little flavor of pass rushing for him. So we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, he'll definitely be an immediate day one contributor for them. Uh, Bill of Eagles again, Trent McDuffie, my number two corner overall, uh, really good zone corner. I know the Eagles have some corners, but like behind their number one and number two, they don't really have much. And McDuffie, he's small enough you could play him in the slot. I would advise you not to. But yeah, he's going to be a dominant corner in this league, especially in his own heavy scheme. I think that the Eagles would be able to bring him in, and he can do man coverage as well. He's got the athleticism and the uh, mentality, even though he's a little smaller. And more corners is never bad, especially in that division with, you know, the Cowboys and things like that. So I'm going to give them a corner here, best corner on the board, second best corner in this draft class, Trent McDuffie out of Washington. My actual, actual favorite pick, the player, is George Karloftis, edge to the Chargers. Chargers are really soft up the middle, and they need to find an edge rusher to complement Bosa after they let go of Melvin Ingram. George Kalatis does both. He can reduce down inside and play interior because he's a big boy. He's a big-bodied boy. He can be like the Aaron Donald of this defense. And then he can also kick out the edge and rush from the edge and use his power to overwhelm, uh, you know, lighter off of the tackles and then c- kick inside and beat all guards with his quickness. So I'm really, really on the George Kalatis to the Los Angeles Chargers board uh, train. It's my favorite pick of his entire mock. I love it. Dearly. If it wasn't him, it would have been Jordan Davis because they need help interior. And I think that he fits both the interior help and edge help in one move. So, favorite pick of this entire draft right here is George Karloftis to the Chargers. Next up is our first quarterback off the board with New Orleans Saints taking Kenny Pickett. You know, there's the concerns about his small hands and how he's going to handle in the NFL, especially after the senior bowl practice with all the rain. You know what's best for that? A dome. <laughs> So playing eight to nine games a year in a dome minimum is going to be great for Kenny Pickett and those small hand, baby hand picket. Uh, I don't actually put a lot of stock in that. You know, if you're a quarterback and you can spin it, you can spin it. But yeah, so it's going to quell a lot of those concerns as well as being put into a position where you have playmakers like Michael Thomas and Traquan Smith on the field. Uh, who's, who knows what's going to happen with Alvin Kamara, but you bring somebody in who can just right the ship after years and years of Drew Brees and then you had... This turbulent up and down season from Jameis who got hurt, and then Taysom who is not a quarterback, and Ian Book, you get this steady hand that comes in to pick it that is accurate at all levels of the field and has a little bit of athleticism that the coaching staff can rely on to be smart and make good decisions with the football. 
Number 19, the Philadelphia Eagles take N'Kobe Dean, uh, a linebacker who's scheme limited to a gap shooting scheme that has uh, defensive tackles who can really eat up blocks. And I don't know a defensive tackle that's better than eating up blocks than Fletcher, Clo- Fletcher Cox. So I, I really like N'Kobe Dean here. He's going to come in, he's going to be able to just take over a game, especially if Fletcher Cox is you know eating up two or three blocks at a time. He'll be able to shoot gaps, make some disruptive plays for the Eagles. I went all defense for them because you got you got the running game down with Jalen Hurts. If you can have a strong running game, this wide receiver class is deep. I'm not going to worry about forcing them receiver here, but if you like if you can get a Christian Watson in the second round and you just added three studs to your defense, you're going to play a strong run. With good defense, that's a, that's a real, real good way to win football games in the NFL, especially deep into January. QB number two comes off the board. Pittsburgh Steelers take Malik Willis, somebody with a strong arm to play in that cold Steelers weather. Somebody who can play. Re, imagine Malik Willis with the read option with Najee Harris. Malik Willis doesn't need to go out there and make you know thirty to forty throws a game. He can turn the ball, hand it off to Najee, dump it off to Najee. If he doesn't know where, if he if he has trouble, give him one read. Okay, one read, dump it off to Najee. One read, run or dump it off to Najee, kind of thing. So he may be limited right away, but. Him having that great running game and good defense to support him will help his growth uh, accelerate and not be as stunted as most people think it's going to be. Number 21, New England Patriots take Roger McCreary, cornerback out of Auburn. Long, physical, good technical cornerbacks for the Patriots. That's just what they like to do. They're losing J.C. Jackson, and they already lost stuff on Gilmore, so they need to re- you know, replenish that cupboard. So it's going to kind of be maddening to see this from an, a Patriots hater, but... Them grabbing, Rod, them grabbing Roger McCurry is going to be a perfect fit for them. Players scheme what they like to do and what they're losing in this offseason. Las Vegas Raiders take Jordan Davis, D-tackle out of Georgia. Las Vegas Raiders drafting big school prospects, especially when they have a need on the interior defensive line to go along with Max Crosby on the edge there. You can't really draw up a better Raiders prospect than Jordan Davis. Like, he's a stereotypical guy they would draft. It's the only thing to make it better is you coming out of Alabama. Uh, so I think that's a perfect fit for what they've done in the past, their culture, and just fits a need what they want on their defense. They they got to start stopping people now because they got all those all these good uh, offenses in the AFC West, and now they have to face Javante Williams and Austin Eckler and Clyde Edwards-Alaire every year. They got to be able to stop up the middle and force them to throw, and then that's a whole other issue we got to address later in this draft. <laughs> 23, we have Arizona Cardinals taking Zion Johnson. I'm on the Zion Johnson train now, too. I was off of him for a while. He was like a low second, early third kind of guy for me. He's now a high second kind of guy for me. He's still not still not in the first round, but, you know, he's, he's about there. He's like the first dash second. I like Zion Johnson for the Cardinals because they have they don't have like a one glaring need on their offensive line, but like Rodney Hudson's up there in age. They Zion Johnson played tackle decently, guard pretty well, and he took snaps at center at the Senior Bowl, so he can play every single position across the board on either side of the line. So you just plug and play him wherever you want, wherever he wins. So you get your best five out there, and if there's any injuries happening, you can just move him over there and just place your backup wherever he is. So he's a very versatile and high level move, movement piece. Uh, He's good at a lot of things. He's not great. Uh, I'm not. He's he's great at something. I'm just not I'm very much impressed with his power. Sorry, I was thinking of a different prospect. I'm not the most impressed with his power as a guard, but I think that he can still play guard at the NFL level, and he's going to be able to move around. And especially when he gets, to, he, he can maybe be able to add on some weight and but to get some more power behind him. Uh, he'll be a versatile piece for them, especially because they don't have like a one glaring need on the offensive line. He can fill any kind of need they want him to be. At number 24, the Dallas Cowboys take Daxon Hill, safety out of Michigan. Uh, Dallas has been trying to find a safety for forever. Remember when they courted, uh, oh, God, what's his name? The safety from, he was in the Legion of Boom, now he's in Baltimore, he got cut. Uh, ooh, I don't remember. Not Cam Chancellor, the other one. But you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. I'm just having a brain fart right now. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys taking Daxon Hill. He can play slot corner for them if they really want him to, if they want to bring back, like, DeMonte KZ and all the guys they had last year. But at the same time, Daxon Hill has such good speed and can be that free safety that they've really been lacking and trying to find over the past few seasons. All right, my Buffalo Bills. They take Ed Ingram, guard out of LSU, one of my favorite guys who are who is in this draft class. Uh, I think he's criminally underrated, and I think that you'll just you know, especially after John Feliciano is gone, you need to bring somebody in who can be a solid guard presence opposite Ryan Bates. And Ingram does everything good. He's going to be more of a zone blocker than a power blocker, even though he does can do power well. 
He's going to be a really good pass blocker when he first comes in the league. He's just very solid, very steady, and that's something what the Bills need right now. They just need somebody who can come in. They don't need to knock out the park with this pick. They just need to bring a solid starter in who can replace an expensive, an expensive veteran just to be able to keep that core fluid and have cap space to work with, which is exactly what they did with releasing Feliciano in this. At 26, the Tennessee Titans take Devin Lloyd, you know, that Belichicking kind of edge rushing linebacker guy. They're losing, going to lose Rashawn Evans. So just he's literally in the mold of Rashawn Evans. He should just be better than Rashawn Evans. So not much thought going into that one. I debated a quarterback here, but you know what? Uh, I think Tannehill had a pretty decent season last year, and they went into the playoffs. They're not going to hop off him too quickly. Number 27, Tennessee, or I'm sorry, <laughs> number 27, Tampa Bay Buccaneers take Jaquan Brisker, safety out of Penn State. That secondary was a little rough. And uh, I, especially with some cuts they're going to maybe have to make, adding a, someone who can come in and start safety for you, especially at strong safety day one uh, for the Bucks is going to come in, is going to be good. Pair him up with Anton Winfield as maybe a split safety duo or have Winfield be the free safety and Brisker be the strong safety slash like sub linebacker kind of guy. And it'll just be able to, you know, be a cheap option for the Bucks to be able to work around that secondary and maybe even improve what the play they had last year. Number 28, the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers is back. Let's make him happy. Jamison Williams, wide receiver out of Alabama. You know, he's not going to be effective right now, but, you know, if you're trying to win the NFC uh, Championship game, he'll be back for that, and he'll be able to come in and be a major difference maker opposite side of Devonta Adams. And with Aaron Rodgers' arm strength, I just can't imagine, like, them just running, like, 75-yard touchdowns. It'd be insane. Like, just go routes. Rodgers to Will. Uh, Jameson Williams would be phenomenal, and I think that'll make a lot of Packers fans happy, especially because they don't normally take wide receivers in the first round. The Miami Dolphins take Chris Olave, wide receiver. Speaking of wide receivers in the first round, uh, the Dolphins really struck out with the Will Fuller deal. Uh, Will Fuller is really injury prone and suspension, and it, it was it was just a mess. So bringing somebody who has shown that that deep speed, as well as having some really good route running ability. He may not be the best blocker right away, but I think he'll come in, he'll be hungry to show that he was the best receiver in the draft class, and he'll be able to come in and, and be that kind of guy that the, the Dolphins really do need uh, to compliment if they're going to ride it out with uh, Tua, they're going to have to give as much weapons to him as possible. Okay. This pick is what I was trying to when I when I first when I first heard the news about Tyron Matthew not coming back to the Chiefs, I thought this pick needs to be made in a mock draft. Let's go make a mock draft and see if I can get this guy to them. And you know, I think I worked my way around to it. Uh, I think with the way things were fitting, I think I liked him falling this far, even though he's my fourteenth or my fourteenth or thirteenth overall player on my board. He falls number thirty to the Kansas City Chiefs. It's Jalen Petrie. Just a Tyron Matthew clone, sticking right in that same exact spot, and then he's gonna succeed in that defense and you don't have to even worry about paying Tyron Matthew. And that's the 2022 4.0 mock draft following the combine and this insane week of just trades and things like that with quarterbacks and the markets and all and leading up to free agency next week. So uh, this, they'll probably do another one in like a week or two after free agency and all the craziness behind that. And that'll probably be the most accurate one of all of them. But I really like this one. I really, really do like this one. I didn't mock any trades. There's already been a few trades that impacted the first round, especially if you count last year's trade. So... Uh, I'm really, I'm really in love with this one. I like a lot of my picks, like George Karloff. This, uh, I liked the Kobe Dean pick, the Edinger pick for the Bills, uh, Jordan Davis, Kenyon Green. You know, Jermaine Johnson. I'm finally on there. Kind of finally got uh, Zion Johnson in the first round. So I, I'm liking this. I love the Jalen Petrie to the Chiefs. So uh, go ahead and give me your reactions. I know I kind of flew through the first couple picks because they're kind of you know solid, similar, and same with the last few. So I really want to just dive into the ones that I think were most impacted by the most recent moves and things. So this should come out either the day I record it or the day after. So hopefully nothing else crazy happens that will blow this up as soon as I post it. So uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Petrie can be that like physical run defender from the secondary as well as come down and play in the slot, man up on guys, play deep safeties, anything like that. Like everything that Tyron Matthew did, he's going to be $10 million cheaper. So I really like Petrie, the Chiefs, to just replace him right there. And they need help in the, safe, in the safety department. So that way, uh, I don't even remember what his name is. The the safety who's really bad that everyone made fun of. Oh, wow. I don't remember. The white guy. Number 49. Wow, I, I can't believe I'm blanking on so many names today. I'm usually good with that. But anyway, yeah, Jalen Petrie, best fit because they just want to replace Tyron Matthew. So there you go. Boom, boom. Tyron Matthew replacement. Save some money for you. Invest it somewhere else. Number 31, Cincinnati Bengals take Bernhard Raymond. I'm not the biggest 
uh, Bernard Raymond, first round pick, you know, guy, but best offensive tackle available. Just get them some more offensive line help. That's what really sank them the uh, Super Bowl. So getting somebody who can come in who has a pretty high ceiling despite having, you know, age questions and things like that. He's late to the game. He'll be able to come in and be a long time tackle for the Bengals and allow them to put their best five outs of line on the field and maybe. When they go back to the Super Bowl again, they won't be able to. They will. They'll keep make sure Joe Rowe doesn't die, like he did during the Super Bowl and the year before when he tore his ACL. The final pick is going to be the Detroit Lions with Traylon Burks, who kind of fell a little bit after a shaky combine performance. He's still a great versatile piece and a weapon, and I think the Lions need somebody like that. Like they have the slot receiver slash maybe an outside guy, and I'm Ron Say Brown. Traylon Burks is going to be that alpha dog number one guy, definitely playing the outside, and you can gimmick him touches. And the Lions just need playmakers on offense, and if they have, they can just gimmick him up stuff. So he'll get plenty of options in this Lions offense. And that's the 2022 4.0 mock draft following the combine and this insane week of just trades and things like that with quarterbacks and the markets and all, and leading up to free agency next week. So uh, this, they'll probably do another one in like a week or two after free agency and all the craziness behind that. And that'll probably be the most accurate one of all of them. But I really like this one. I really, really do like this one. I didn't mock any trades. There's already been a few trades that impacted the first round, especially if you count last year's trade. So. Uh, I'm really, I'm really in love with this one. I like a lot of my picks, like George Karloff. This, uh, I liked the Kobe Dean pick, the Ed Ingram pick for the Bills, uh, Jordan Davis, Kenyon Green. You know, Jermaine Johnson. I'm finally on there. Kind of finally got uh, Zion Johnson in the first round. So I, I'm liking this. I love the JLP Petrie to the Chiefs. So uh, go ahead and give me your reactions. I know I kind of flew through the first couple picks because they're kind of you know solid, similar, and same with the last few. So I really want to just dive into the ones that I think were most impacted by the most recent moves and things. So this should come out either the day I record it or the day after. So hopefully nothing else crazy happens that will blow this up as soon as I post it. So uh. One hour later. Breaking news that we bring you here today. Khalil Mack is on the move. The Bears and the Chargers are finalizing a deal that would send the star pass rusher here to Los Angeles. Fuck! <laughs> 